Peter Sam was now busier than ever. He had to do Sir Handel's work as well as his own. Unlike Sir Handel, who was causing no trouble at all now, after being put in his place by Top Hat, that is. Which is fine because Sir Handel was being unreasonably rude last time. And that didn't stop him from muttering things behind Peter Sam's back either. He's just turned out to be a sour pot, huh? Scarloe encouraged Peter Sam, however, and told him to focus. Unfortunately, that was hard for him to do. But somehow, the faster he wanted to go, the slower the journey became. Yeah, well, this was something Peter Sam was learning, and that was being impatient. He was so fixed on trying to go as fast as he could, he felt as if he wasn't ever going fast enough. Thankfully, the coaches were pleased with Peter Sam's treatment, but this didn't stop him from feeling further and further behind. This won't do, youngster, said Henry. I can't be kept waiting. If you are late tonight, I'll go off and leave your passengers behind. <laughs> said Peter Sam. Secretly, he was a little worried, but not for long. Why is that? Did he not see how awful that face mask was on Henry? That's the worst error I've seen in a long time. Forget all the cracks they made about Gordon and his wonky eyes. This is the worst. How does one confuse Gordon's upset face with Henry's upset face? That's just not possible. Because in those quick frames, it's flat out strange to see Gordon in green. As long as we don't ever see an abomination mishap like that again, I think we will feel much safer. What fun it all is, he thought, as he journeyed along the line. One part of Peter Sam's journey was taking an hour-long rest at the lakeside station. There his crew would hang out at Neptune Refreshments where they met the refreshment lady. I don't know why this had to be done, though. Normally trains do not have time to wait an hour before they have to leave to their next destination. Unless there's a problem. But that's how his schedule worked. Now as for Peter Sam, he began to worry over the fact that if he didn't leave soon, Henry wouldn't wait for him. The refreshment lady was making her way to the train. Then it happened. The conductor says that Peter Sam was too impatient. Peter Sam says he was sure he heard a whistle. Anyway, he started. Well, here's another story of false startups. Thomas's train was the very first to do this, and here we are again. I like the way the story is told at this point. It sounds like we are in a court hearing. The guard said one thing while Peter Sam said something contrary. Like anyone's going to know the real answer. Anyway, after that happened, Peter Sam made his way back to the platform where the refreshment lady got on board. They arrived at the big station just in time. Hurrah, said Peter Sam. He felt very relieved. I know, he was moving so fast. Close to a top speed of what looked like 10 miles an hour. Watch out, we got a daredevil here. Henry was also satisfied with Peter Sam's dedication. However, the refreshment lady was frustrated over the fact of being left behind. Of course, because there's always one character who isn't happy, right? Peter Sam tried to explain. But Henry said he might leave without us. Then the refreshment lady laughed. You silly engine. Henry was teasing you. He wouldn't have gone without our passengers. He's a guaranteed connection. Well, said Peter Sam, where's that Henry? But Henry had chortled away. Well, that was pretty slick of the old steamer, wasn't it? Henry usually isn't the one playing games on other engines. But hey, I guess there's a time for everyone at some point. This was a good episode. It wasn't really that confusing, nor was it that disengaging. It seems as though we are still behind in the timeline, though, since this story takes place not long after Sir Handel's grounding. As for Peter Sam, we get to see him and how his impatience affects him differently. Sir Handel was impatient with adjusting to work. 
while Peter Sam was impatient while doing the work. And yeah, Henry's little joke didn't exactly help, but it didn't get Peter Sam into trouble either, so it was more or less harmless. What I do find interesting though is that for a few entries, every narrow gauge that arrived at Croven's gate has met a larger scale engine of the same color. Scarlowe and James, Sir Handel and Gordon, and Peter, Sam, and Henry. Ah, the drama queens of Sodor. How could I forget that infamous trio? Sidestepping that, I still can't believe that incorrect character face used on Henry. For shame, production crew. You had it right at the end of the story, why not at the beginning? It's just so weird seeing Gordon in green. For locations, the view changes a number of times. Reneus's viaduct and the Sodor Castle Causeway are familiar spots. So is the Hall and Dory line, but not from the stream perspective. That's what's different here. The same could be said for the lakeside station next to the Neptune refreshment stand. It gives a better idea of the residential buildings near the line. For music, the Scarlowe Railway theme is heard. No surprise there. But we also gladly get the Busy Engines theme as Peter Sam initially stops at Croven's Gate. It's a tune we haven't heard in a while. Next episode is Trucks. Thanks for watching.